All right, hey, hello everybody, welcome to UGA Sports. My name is Roddy DeBulsi, I'm joined by Jed May. We just got done, is it watching our third? Third, yeah, third viewing of the, of the fall. Third viewing of the fall, Kirby Smart let us in. They were indoors today because the weather out here is really nasty. There's been uh, uh, lightning in the area, so they're practicing indoors, which was good because we didn't see just the individual drills like right. we normally do. We actually got to see them do hurry up. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we walk out there, Kirby Smart has his first team offense, his first, uh, then second team offense, third team offense on a clock. He's he's walking them down the field and he starts counting down after a couple seconds. He goes seven, mm -hmm. six, five, and they have to get in place and throw the ball. Saw some in that first team offense, Carson Beck throwing some nice balls to Marcus Roseby, Jack Saint. Mm -hmm. You were watching the defense. Show, tell me what you saw. Yeah, it was interesting. So Kamari Lassiter, who many expect is going to be one of the starting corners in a black jersey, non-contact, wasn't going through that portion. So with the first team defense was freshman A.J. Harris and oh, oh, oh. sophomore, or maybe redshirt freshman Julian Humphrey. So Kirby was rolling yeah. them in with the ones a little bit. Um, second team was Nyland Green and Dalen Everett. Um, first team inside linebackers was Jamon Dumas Johnson, of course, and then Xavier Sori with Smile Mondon still battling that foot injury. So, you know, Kirby's giving guys some reps. I mean, that's what practice is for is roll guys in and out, see who is is ready, who, who he thinks can contribute. Um, obviously, that second corner starting position is open. The depth is has got to be developed. So uh, it was interesting to see some of those young guys get some work. A.J. Harris had a nice tackle. Julian Humphrey had a nice tackle a little bit later in practice. So uh, young guys are getting their shot with, with Lassiter banged up a little bit. To speaking about the cornerbacks, when they left when they left that drill and they did go to do some individual drills, it was different than what we've seen in the past. And uh, saw Fran Brown taking his guys. They were doing some uh, get off the block drills mm -hmm. to, to take a tackler, so run support. Mm -hmm. That's big. Uh, shout out to uh, Harris in that one. AJ had mm -hmm. a very nice tackle there. Let somebody up. Not too hard. I mean, it's it's thud, but right. sometimes you know you, you hard take a good, to take notice of. You take yeah. a good and hard enough for Fran Brown to come over and go whack you know, whack him right. on the shoulders. Good job. Good job. Um, and then they went to uh, some coverage drills where you're just watching the guy's hips. They're teaching them to watch the hips and not get, don't fall for the head fakes and all that stuff. A, a, another cornerback, you know, another defensive back is running a route. You don't know which way it's going to go, so you have to stay on his hips. And everybody did really well in that one, but that was the first time I've seen that Julian Humphrey speed mm -hmm. where I won't say he was beat. He wasn't beat at all, but you just saw the distance between him and the uh, closing speed. The closing speed. Mm -hmm. just, all of a sudden he's there and granted I mean that's what you're supposed to in the drill they know you're going to get picks there but I kind of see why he's in the mix and you see right. why Nyland Green's in the mix and of course Dalen Everett's been my personal pick to win that starting spot there so that was pretty impressive uh what else did what else caught your mind um you know I saw some of those younger defensive linemen I saw Jamal Jarrett out there who you know those you mentioned those hurry up drills those are huge for for guys like him staying on the field <laughs> those, those multiple are nightmares I <laughs> uh, saw Dan Jackson out there Tyrion Ingram Dawkins well, uh, he's been battling a, a foot injury. He was out there. Um, you mentioned the offensive line. You know, the first team is what we'd expect. Ernest Green, left tackle, Xavier Truss, Cedric Van Pran, Tate Ratledge, and Marius Smith. The right. second team, Anthony Dasher got a look. It's Austin Blasky at left tackle. Um, yeah, Micah Morris at left guard. Nice. Backup center, everyone wonders about. That's Jared Wilson right now, or was today anyway. Dylan Fairchild at right guard, and Chad Lindbergh at tackle. So you mentioned, you know, Dash had a story today actually about tackle depth and developing that. Austin Blasky is kind of that swing guy. Yeah. You know, if, if if Mims or say it's Ernest Green gets hurt, he'd be the guy. Who's after him? Like, or if you know, if somebody, if Cedric Van Pran goes down and Blasky has to go to center, who goes in? So Chad Lindbergh and, and they, is and there. They've had, years and years they've had tackles get hurt. Look how many yep. games did Jamari Sawyer miss? Andrew you know? Thomas. Andrew Thomas. Yeah. yeah so it's... that's kind of the question. You know, Chad Lindbergh's in the mix. Xavier Trust came in as a tackle, could kick out. Monroe Freeling, a freshman. So. That's one of the interesting things on offense is seeing how that depth develops, especially out there at tackle. One of the things I caught a lot of grief for, and well-deserved, was when I wrote the notes on the first day of fall camp. I said, this team does not have a ton of weaknesses. Yeah, they could use a little bit more depth at running back. That's before everybody got hurt. Right. But I said, the one area that I would be worried about if I was a Georgia fan is your offensive line depth. And mm -hmm. everyone said, what the hell are you smoking? I'm like, well, you know, it's a, it's a Cohiba, but there's nothing in it. There's no nothing, no our narcotics. I'm just saying, that in past years, when you looked at Georgia's offensive tackles, they were always being backed up by another first round guy. Broderick mm -hmm. Jones didn't start. Amarius Mims didn't start when they got here. Mm -hmm. Those were guys, they were backing up other NFL caliber players. And that's not to say that Austin Blasky and uh, uh, Chad Lindbergh and those guys aren't that caliber. They are, but after you get past uh, Austin, to your point, who, who's there? You're, you're starting a, a, a left tackle who's gonna be a freshman, a redshirt mm -hmm. freshman in Ernest Green. There's, there's not that 
uh, crowned five star waiting right. on, in in the in the uh, wings. Well, and the thing about it is, in a perfect world, offensive line is not one of those positions like receiver where you know you're going to rotate guys in and out. Like offensive yeah. line in a perfect world, you'd have five guys play every snap for all fourteen or fifteen until you pull them all. But that <laughs> but that doesn't happen. Guys so. get rolled up. Guys, you know, there, there's a million different things that can right. happen to you as alignments. So but depth is is super important. I think that's what Kirby Smart. Like I think. Last week he mentioned he believes he's got seven or eight guys that could play winning football. Mm -hmm. I think he wants that number to be closer to that nine or ten mark by the time the season starts, especially right. later in the year. So during that uh, the hurry up offense and hurry up defense, we uh, our man uh, Patrick was writing down a ton of notes. So you need to go by UGA Sports. Look at our practice notes. There's a lot of stuff there. The first thing that I posted when we when I was able to check the field was that there's a missing player. I was out there looking for Lawson and Lucky. Uh, Lawson has gotten a ton of praise in the spring. He's gotten a ton of praise in fall camp so far. Uh, he, this is a big guy uh, when it comes to them running their 12 personnel because you've got uh, basically Brock Bowers, All-American, and then you get into Oscar Delp, who played a good bit last year, but he couldn't get on the field as much with Darnell Washington here, mm -hmm. so everyone's looking at him. But then after that, it's Lawson Lucky and Pierce Sperling. Yep. Pierce didn't play all spring because he was injured. And so you're kind of hoping that he gets a lot of reps and Lawson gets a lot of reps and it gives Georgia their ability to, you know, run those two, two tight ends at the same time. But Lawson's out with what I'm told is an ankle injury. We don't know. Mm -hmm. We're not certain. But and we're not going to get any confirmation on it till, till yeah. Saturday when Kirby Smart meets with us after the second scrimmage. Unless Delp talks to us tonight. Fingers crossed. Yeah, he ain't going to tell us anything. <laughs> but point being, uh, it's just noteworthy that he wasn't out there. And that's, uh, we'll see how good. And it could be a small thing like, we reported that Kendall Milton wasn't at practice. We knew that he had a hamstring issue, and then he wasn't at the practice when we walked out there. Mm -hmm. But then Kirby Smart said, look, you know, I don't have him do every drill, especially when right. they're banged up. He came out later on in practice for like 11-11 or something like that. So it could just be a situation where he wasn't out there while we were. He could have been uh, getting taped, could have uh, extra uh, uh, therapy or something on it, you know, extra right. treatment, not therapy, treatment. He's getting extra treatment, and he might be out there later on. But that's just, it, it was noteworthy. I thought it was good to see uh, Kamari Laster back out there. And he had a nice play in, you know, in those coverage drills you mentioned. He had a nice play where he broke up a pass. So it's, yeah. he's, he looks good. It's just a matter of you got to get back into the into the swing of things, one, and then get that black jersey off and get some contact going, too. Who else looks good to you? There's a couple of guys. Daniel Harris looks really good. Um, yeah, he's, he's also a freshman. He's really, really just long. Like you can, He was working with the corners, mm -hmm. and you could just picture the – the staff's vision of that six foot one, six foot two guy with really, really long arms on the outside. Yeah. Um, length doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be a good corner. There's a lot more to it, but it certainly doesn't help. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, he was. Yeah, I'm he on my good. tiptoes um, here trying to get more yeah. length with this um, son of a bitch beside me. You know, so there's there's some the, the younger guys on defense. I mean, C.J. Allen. I saw him. This is the first day practice viewing day. I've looked at the defense. So C.J. Allen looks good. A.J. Harris looks yes. looks good. I mean, he's a guy who came in as kind of the you know, especially when you look at corners, I would say was the the star of the corner group, maybe, yeah. and and he looks the part already. So yeah. and and Kirby threw him out there with the first team today. I mean, is is he going to start game one? I don't know, but but Kirby is already throwing him in the mix to see how he can uh, how he can fare out there. Uh, looking at the overall, I mean, the quarterbacks looked sharp. They looked like they were on target. I didn't see a ton of bad throws. Uh, There's a nice pass to I think it was Jackson Meeks in the corner, long bomb from uh, Brock Vandegrift. So. Uh, not a whole lot to see in the quarterbacks in that drill because mm -hmm. it's they're going fast and it was yep. you know passes to the sideline so the guy could get out of bounds if he breaks free go up the field mm -hmm. but if not get out of bounds that was the purpose of i guess it was their one minute drill yeah i guess you know? and then that's more of a like the drill was more to focus on tight ends and receivers perimeter blocking defensive yep. backs getting off blocks oh, they did a ton of perimeter the, block drills yes yes a lot. just that's the first thing we saw after that uh the hurry up was Okay, hey, if you missed a block, now we're going to work on it again. And, you know, you talked about Oscar Delp earlier. He's that guy who might have to step in and replace Darnell Washington. Kirby Smart praised him for a, a nice block. So how many times did we see Darnell Washington leading the way on screens, on tosses, yeah. on uh, whatever? Oscar Delp got called out for praising that day. So that, that should make you feel good if you're a Georgia fan. Uh, with the hurry up, I didn't see anybody out of position, which is big. Cause, and Kirby mm -hmm. had him going really fast, faster than yes. they'd probably go in a game. And... Uh, the only time there's a maybe one guy on the third string defense mm -hmm. who wasn't in position on one play, but that could have been because he was running to his position. Mm -hmm. you know, so don't. And it, again, it's a, we were up in a very small viewing area. We weren't very mm -hmm. close, so I can't say that for sure. Any other things stuck out to you? I don't think so. Just oh. fun to fun to get to see some practice. It means yeah. football season's close. It was nice. All right, folks. Uh, until next time. Until the next viewing period. This is Jed May and Roddy DeBulsey for UGA Sports.